So this series is all about how to become an entrepreneur and I'm gonna be going over all the trials and tribulations that I went through to become an entrepreneur, but I'm also gonna be giving you some tips and some tricks if you also wanna start your own business and become a full-time entrepreneur. So if you're out there and you've been thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or you're already an entrepreneur and you want some more guidance and some tips, make sure you stay tuned and watch all the videos in the Girl Boss series. For day one, I decided that I'm just gonna tell you guys my story of how I became an entrepreneur. And just FYI, it is not all roses and daisies. I know uh, social media has everybody thinking that being an entrepreneur is so glamorous and everything is just gonna be great and their first business just popped off and now they're millionaires. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, that is not the, rea the reality of becoming an entrepreneur. It is not like most entrepreneurs have had so many bad days before they started having the great days that you see on Instagram. And I just want to make sure that everyone sets their expectations the right way, because if your expectations is not right, when you become an entrepreneur, your first failure, you're going to just quit. But knowing that, Hey, failure is a part of the process you will understand like, hey, this is all a learning experience and you'll keep going. But if you think you're just gonna pop off from one product and your first YouTube video is gonna get a million views and you got this whole thing messed up. So let's get started with my story. How did I become an entrepreneur? So first of all, a little background on me. I was in the military. I joined the military when I was eight, 19 years old, okay? But I did reserve. So I was in reserves. And then while I was in the reserves, I was in a full-time student. I went to Bethune-Cookman University. Hell, Wildcats. And while I was at Bethune-Cookman University, I took part in the ROTC program. So most, most people don't know, who, if you're not already in the military, you don't know this, but you know, the ROTC program in college actually prepares you to be a military officer uh, on active duty. So I went from being enlisted and then once I graduated from college, I went to went on to become an officer in the United States Air Force. So I was an officer in the Air Force for about six years, okay? And this is, when I joined the military, is kind of when my entrepreneurial journey started, okay? So like most people's first entrepreneurial endeavor, uh, most people start with multi-level marketing, right? Y'all call them pyramid schemes. The actual word for them is multi-level marketing. Now, multi-level marketing gets a really bad rap, but in some cases it is very uh, profitable and legit. There's nothing inherently like illegal about MLMs. It's just the way that people go about it that makes it seem really, really sketchy. And I have to admit that I might have been going about it the wrong way when I first started. My first or second year, uh, after I graduated from college, I was introduced to an MLM opportunity. Now before this, I had never known, I, I didn't know what MLM was, I didn't know what a, I didn't know businesses like this existed. So when someone said, hey, you can make money doing this and this is all you gotta do and invite your friends and boom, 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 I was like, what? Sign me up. Like I signed up for the highest package, right? I was in a company called Organo Gold. Their main product is coffee, right? So they, I got signed up in this company when I was about 24 and I started doing the stereotypical MLM things, you know, getting all my friends, contacting my friends and family. I was getting a few signups here and there, made a little bit of money, but I really wasn't making a whole lot of money. I wasn't really making that much money. I made money here and there, but I was like really, really into it. And here's one thing that I think that a lot of people don't understand about uh, multi-level marketing is it's really big on personal development and that is when I got introduced to personal development and started reading personal development books and like I got literally like obsessed with personal development so I started reading all these books and I started learning so much about entrepreneurship now that company I didn't really I wasn't successful in that company however I took away so much knowledge in this fire got lit under me about being an entrepreneur. And like, I never saw life the same. Like after I joined that company and I saw people making this much money and I saw people driving these nice cars 
and I got introduced to so many different other businesses that I just couldn't be okay with just having a job. Even though being in the military, a military officer is very, very prestigious, something in me was like, I wanted more, I wanted to be my own boss, I wanted to have my own business. Now at this point, I didn't know what type of business I wanted, I just knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So fast forward, right? I'm not, so I, I ended up moving to Korea for a little bit. Uh, I got stationed in Korea. Uh, when I got back from Korea, I was living in Montgomery, Alabama. This was probably in 2016. Um, so by then, I've already started a YouTube channel. I was kind of dibbling and dabbling in YouTube at this point. Not really taking it serious. I was doing, I used to do like hair stuff. I was a hair uh, YouTuber and a makeup YouTuber at one point in time. If you, if you go back to like some old videos, you'll see them. But I was doing that at first. Um, it was actually going pretty good, but then I started to really get into fitness. So I kind of changed my whole page to fitness, right? But anyways, I'm living in Alabama, and, and when I was living in Alabama is when I decided that, okay, I want to get out of the military. So living in Alabama is when I decided I wanted to get out of the military, and that was about six years after I went active duty that I decided to get out of the military. While I was in Alabama is when I really started to dibble and dabble into entrepreneurship. I started learning a lot. Uh, my first business was actually a t-shirt business. I was doing drop ship. I was doing print on demand uh, drop shipping t-shirts. Now I didn't really know a whole lot. This is before drop shipping was like super super um, like well known. Like and I kind of kicked myself because I was like on the cutting edge of drop shipping. Now everyone does it. But back then in 2016, nobody was really doing drop shipping like that. And I was learning a lot. That's how I learned how to do Facebook ads. For some reason, I stopped doing drop shipping and I actually was learning a lot. Like I remember at one point I had developed a store called, I, I created a Shopify store called um, Urban Flower. I don't know, I made up some weird name. And I was drop shipping uh, from AliExpress. And remember when those little so sticky bras were popular? Like the, the bras that stick to you and then they have the little thing to tie. And I was drop shipping those and I was actually making a profit. But for some reason, I just decided to stop doing it. I don't know why, like I just stopped doing it. I think like the Facebook ads got too expensive and I was like, no, this is not a good business. And I stopped doing it. And I'm really mad because if I would have just kept honing in on that face, on, on the drop shipping, who knows where I would be. But anyways, like I was drop shipping shirts and then I started drop shipping from AliExpress. I kind of did with that in affiliate marketing as well. I learned how to create affiliate marketing like blog sites. I learned how to create like little simple websites for affiliate marketing. I taught myself how to use click funnels and I was using affiliate, I was doing affiliate marketing with click funnels. None of those were successful for me. It was, I, I learned a lot, I learned a whole lot. And I'm actually like still using those things that I learned, but I wasn't really making money. I was wasting money on Facebook ads and not making money. So I got out of the military, right? Got out of the military. Now, when I got out of the military, I didn't have a, a profitable business. I, I had saved a lot of money. So by the, by the time I had got out of the military, I had saved about $25,000 in the bank. And I just said, hey, I'm gonna just, we gonna figure it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. And if, it, if I don't figure it out, my thing in the back of my mind was I could always go get a job because like I have this, I, I was a military officer in, in logistics. I was halfway through my master's degree, you know, got a bachelor's degree. I figured, hey, if all those fails, I can get a job, <laughs> you know? So I got out of the military, didn't have a job. Uh, but I, what I did start was I started a social media, social media marketing agency. That was my first real business. I had got an LLC and everything. For it, right? So I had uh, I had an LLC and I had bought a course. So if y'all know who Ty Lopez is, Ty Lopez was like the first person to come out with the social media marketing course. His course when I bought it was, I want to say it was $1,000 when I bought it. it. It taught me a lot though. It wasn't the greatest course, not gonna lie. It taught me a lot, but the course was so sporadic. It was like, there was no actual like step by step. It was like, here's how to do Facebook ads. Here's how to do social media. Here's how to do this. It was just like not, it, it should have been broken down like step by step, but it wasn't, but it taught me a lot. So I took that course and I started a social media marketing agency when I got to, so I got out of the military and I moved to Atlanta. Atlanta is where I'm at right now. 2017, the summer of 2017 is when I got out of the military. 
The social media marketing agency was okay. It wasn't really making me enough money though for me to sustain myself. Um, I had a few clients here and there, but it wasn't really sustaining me enough to you know, live off of that. So I was really dipping into my savings a lot. So I kind of figured like, you know what? Social media marketing is not my thing. I love social media, but I didn't like doing social media for other businesses. So I, saw I had to go back to the drawing board. I had to go back to the drawing board and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Because my money is running low <laughs> and uh, you got to figure something out, Deja, or you're going to have to go get a job. So what happened was I ended, I decided that fitness was going to be my thing. I was like, okay, let's take fitness seriously. Now before then I was, I was already a fitness YouTuber but I was not a certified personal trainer. I was a group fitness instructor, but I wasn't a certified personal trainer. So I decided to, hey, let me get, let me go get certified. So I went and got certified in personal training, right? And then I started to work at a gym. So I was working at Crunch, right? And all the while, I'm still doing YouTube. I'm still um, growing my Instagrams. You know what I'm saying? So through all this, the years, I was always growing my Instagram and I was always, uh, growing my YouTube. Now YouTube sometimes took a back burner because it, you know at that point it wasn't really making me that much money but I was always growing and growing and growing. I think by this point by 2017 I might have had about 10,000 subscribers um, on Instagram. So I became a full-time entrepreneur. No, I mean, I mean I became a full-time personal trainer uh, but still I was not making enough money y'all and um, there were days where I would like just break down and cry because I just didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to get a job because I felt like getting a job would mean I failed and I quit. And it really was hard. Like the first, um, I'm not crying, my, my eyes are, my, eye, my uh, contact is acting up, but there were days where I just didn't know what I was going to do. And I kept thinking to myself, like, why? It seems like everyone else just does things and it just works. And nothing that I do works. Like, I tried um, affiliate marketing, I tried drop shipping, um, social media. Um, it just seemed like nothing didn't work. And then I felt like, dang, I've been really on YouTube for years and I haven't, my YouTube hasn't taken off the way I wanted to. And I was getting really down on myself. And I think for a whole year, I mean, no one probably knew this, but for a whole, maybe like a year, I was really down and like maybe even depressed a little bit. Um, there was a, uh, I remember the, the 2018, was it 2018? Yeah, 2018, I was actually, I had to start doing Uber for a couple of months. I only did it for a couple of months, but I was doing Uber and Uber Eats. And I was doing, um, I, I did Instacart for like a month, but Instacart freaking sucks. So I quit that real quick. I remember I would wake up in the morning at 4.30 a.m. And I would do um, the Uber in the morning and catch everyone that was going to the airport or going to work. And then I would leave, I would stop doing Uber around 9 a.m. And then I would go to Orange Theory. I was an Orange Theory coach for a few months. And then from Orange Theory, I would go to Crunch, train some clients, Sometimes in between my breaks at Crunch, I would go back to doing Uber Eats or Uber, and then I would go back to Crunch. And through all of this, I'm still doing YouTube. I'm still growing my, I think I had a Facebook group at this point too. I had started building a Facebook group. Through all this, I was still learning. I was still learning and reading and just learning, right? Eventually though, it started to, I started to make some money with my training. I didn't have to do Uber anymore, but I still wasn't where I wanted to be, okay? This is where it all changed, okay? So if you're still watching, this is probably the most important part that I want you to listen to, okay? This is where it all changed. The summer of 2019, okay? Um, I had saved up some money and I said, okay, look, I'm going to get a coach. I'm going to get a business coach because I know just from me doing research and reading books and really listening to interviews, all these major entrepreneurs who are making millions of dollars, they all say, well, you need a coach, you need a coach. So I started researching coaches and I got a coach. Now I did end up getting two coaches. The first coach didn't work out. <laughs> the first coach didn't work out, but I ended up getting another coach like a month later. And that is where I saw growth in my business, in my personal training 
business. And I'm gonna tell you right now, getting a coach is a very, very big decision because getting a coach, a good coach, it is not cheap at all. Now, if you're out there and you're also an online trainer and you want to, you want me to connect you with my coach, let me know, send me a message. I'll connect you guys to my coach. Getting a coach is not cheap. So it was a very big decision. And it was literally, it was literally to the point where I was like, if this don't work, I'm gonna have to go get a job. Cause that's how much money I spent on the coach. But I had faith and I, I believed in him. And I said, this has to work. And I did exactly what he told me to do. That is why most people are successful with coaches because they, they get a coach and still think they know everything. No, you, if you're gonna pay a coach, trust the coach. I did exactly what he told me to do. But here's the thing, I already kind of knew everything. I just didn't know how to put it together. And what his program helped me do was put it together and create a system for my online training, okay? So the, coach, the coaching program was a coaching program just for online trainers. Once I started implementing what he taught me, I immediately started making money. Okay, like immediately. Um, now in the beginning, it was a little bit choppy. And in the beginning, um, sometimes I would still break down because I'm like, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. I felt like I wasn't making enough. So there were still some, some bad days there, and then there were some great days. Uh, but as soon as I joined that program and started implementing those tools, I started making money. Now here's the thing. It's, it still required a lot of work. Like I didn't just get a coach and then magically start making money. To, to, do what, to do what I needed to do, there were days where I worked, I was on my laptop for eight to sometimes 10 hours a day on my laptop. You know, some days I didn't have a weekend. I was, you know, I was in bill mode. Um, but as soon as I started doing that, I started making money, y'all. And that is what you see today. So today, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I have my total body transformation program. That is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Um, it's a, pretty much as a virtual uh, fitness coach. I'm your, I'm your virtual fitness coach. I do what your trainer would do and even more, and it's all virtual. You get, you get live workouts with me. Also, bring your head up when you crunch. You get uh, on-demand customized workouts. You get customized nutrition. Um, you also get check-in calls. It's like really like, you get a lot. Like, I don't know any trainers that's doing all of this unless you pay a top, top dollar, you know what I'm saying? But, so that's what you see today. That is what you see today. And I've taken what he, what, from what I learned from my coach and just transformed that into more. Now, you know, my challenges. So most people know me and they find me through my challenges, my 21 day challenges. My first challenge that I did, which was in 20, 17, I think, I maybe had like 10 people in the challenge. Now when I do a challenge, I'm doing close to 150-ish people in every challenge. And that's really with not too much like Facebook ads. That's just like really just all organic, um, all organic pr promoting. Like I'll do Facebook ads a little bit here and there, but I'm not really putting that much money into Facebook ads. Most of my growth in my challenges come from just organic uh, traffic. And yeah, so if you take anything away from this video, I would say be very deliberate on what you want, make a plan, and then get a coach. Like honestly, like I don't feel like anyone is gonna reach their full potential without a coach. Because look, think about all the greatest athletes. The greatest athletes don't become great by being in the gym training on their own. They get attached to a coach who, who knows exactly what to do to push them to the limit and to get them to that next level. Not one professional uh, athlete has, has gone the distance without a coach, without someone outside of themselves, okay? But yeah, guys, that's pretty much my story and that's pretty much where I am right now. Uh, my online coaching business has allowed me to, you know, live my dream of having a down uh, having an apartment in downtown atlanta um you know i wouldn't i could not be able to afford this if i hadn't joined that coaching program and that's why when people you know the first thing you think about when you join a coaching program is the price but literally like i made that money back like that month you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah it's a lot but think about all the value you're gonna get from it you know same thing with getting like a fitness coach Getting a fitness coach, like yeah, you know, getting a getting a fitness coach, personal trainer, a good personal trainer is not cheap, 
But guess what? Guess all the knowledge and accountability that you're getting from that coach and apply that. And if you do exactly what that coach says, you will see results. You just have to do what he says, you know? But anyways, ladies, this is, like I said, this is the, only the first video of the uh, Girl Boss series. And uh, there will be more videos to come. We're gonna be talking about uh, how to make money online. We're gonna be talking about how to grow your social media, how I grew my social media, how to become a YouTuber. We're gonna be talking about my different streams of income and how you can get different streams of income. Talking about how to be an influencer, all that stuff. So, if you want to learn all that stuff, make sure you tune in to the rest of the Girl Boss series. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.